All right, what's up, guys? Tyler Harris here. Thank you for uh, joining us on this episode of the My Living Legacy vlog. If you're seeing this right now, um, I'm in Nicaragua, uh, but this is Tuesday, so we are cutting a little bit of a um, preview video of what's to come and really wanted to talk about uh, the mission and our purpose down in Nicaragua and what we're doing for the people of Nicaragua. So you guys uh, may or may not have seen, if you haven't, definitely go back and check out the vlog uh, from a few months ago when we went down to Nicaragua. It was my first mission trip down there. And it was, to say that it was an incredible experience is the understatement of the century. Um, it was so impactful uh, for me and for all the others that went with us. But when we were down there on that trip, uh, the main focus was feeding people, it was holding revivals at night, preaching, more feeding, and really just going out and loving on these people that are in desperate need of hope, uh, in desperate need of love, and desperate need of food, quite frankly, and are just struggling in a bad way. Um, the barrios that we visited, I mean, it's as bad as it gets. Um, most people don't have homes. Uh, we went out to the trash dumps one day and you, know, you had families out there that were you know kicking away these giant birds that were fighting over the same food and you know, that's where they go every day to the trash dump to get food or some metal or anything that they could possibly scrap to barter or trade or somehow try to provide for their families and and it was eye-opening it was eye-opening it's one thing in the u.s to see poverty with opportunity because that's what we have here um, there are certainly people that are in a poverty uh, stricken situation, but there's opportunity all around us. But to go to a country, a third world country, where there's poverty with very little opportunity, I wouldn't say no, but very little opportunity, was, yeah, it was very disheartening and it was eye opening for me. But one thing that I realized when we were down there, uh, as we would go out into these communities and we would, you know, hand out bags of food to families that were in need is the way it affected the men when we were down there and the men of Nicaragua uh, that we were trying to serve. We would hold these revivals at night and we would have 200, 300, you know, one night we had 450 people show up out of nowhere, but very few men uh, would show up. And it really affected me. And when I came back, I just kind of couldn't get it out of my mind and couldn't get it off my heart to try to figure out how do we reach the men of Nicaragua? Because if you think about it, when we go down there, you have men that aren't able to provide for their families, aren't, aren't, you know, are struggling to even be able to provide food for their families, no less provide an income and, and any type of lifestyle than any, any of us would dream of. Um, and so we're coming down there and we're just giving their family food, which is, you know, kind of like stabbing the, the man in the back and saying like, Hey, you can't provide this. We're just going to give it to them. You know, obviously they were grateful to have food that night, but it just made it that much more apparent to them. And it made it that much more visible and tangible of what they were not able to provide. And the men that would even show up to the revivals at night, they would kind of be way off in the back, a lot of times just out in the street, maybe, you know, kind of standing against a fence or a tree with their, you know, arms crossed and just weren't engaged whatsoever. And so when we got back, uh, I called a meeting with um, the heads of the ministry that we go down there with, which is Chosen Children Ministry. And the focus of that meeting was really to brainstorm some ideas of how do we reach the men uh, of Nicaragua. And the idea that we ultimately came to a, uh, agreement on is that we would go back down and we would specifically target our efforts towards the men of Nicaragua. And so how do we do that? Well, what we know is we all know the, the, the phrase, you know, teach a man to fish versus giving a man a fish. And so what we wanted to do was be able to provide them with the ability to, after we leave, continue on a path towards being able to provide for their families. And so what that's going to look like during this trip is uh, we're going to build a couple of houses. We're going to build two houses and two outhouses, but we're going to provide some men in the barrio where we're building those houses with an opportunity to work. So they're going to be able to earn a wage, uh, a more than fair wage versus what they're used to. 
We're going to provide them with a bag of tools that they will then keep afterwards. So we put together this package of, of, um, uh, tools that would basically be like your necessities for doing any type of manual labor, uh, that we're going to give them, which they'll be able to keep, you know, when we leave. And then we're going to teach them how to build a house, which, you know, in the process of teaching them how to build a house, you're really teaching them how to build anything. Um, you know, these are cement floor, you know, metal walls, um, which, you know, for them is life changing when you're used to dirt floors and plastic tarps over your head. But each day that we're with them, they will be working and they will be earning money. And then at the end of the day, we'll also give them a bag of food to bring home to their families. But this time it won't be us showing up to their house and saying, Hey, here you go. It will be them coming back home that night, having put in a hard day's work and having earned that food and provided for their family. And throughout the day, our goal is to really just pour into these men, you know, just love on them you know, give them hope, you know, speak encouragement to them as to what's possible, not only what's possible when you do put in a hard day's work, but what's possible, you know, when you have a relationship with God and that you have God as your source of faith and you have God as your source of hope and you know, what their life could look like a week down the road, a month down the road, a year down the road with that relationship with God. And now with some tools in hand and some skills that they've built to go out and be able to hopefully provide for their families in the future. We're bringing a few men down with us, uh, which I'm really excited about. Some friends of mine that are going to be coming down. Uh, Pablo will be there. Dave Walton, who you guys have been able to see in a number of different pieces of content that we've put out, has been one of the strongest, strongest spiritual mentors in my entire life. Um, and a man that I just have the utmost respect for. Uh, we're going to be going down. And really, this will be the kind of training ground. This will be a testing of this process, a testing of this type of trip to do future trips next year. And so I would highly encourage you guys, uh, if you're listening to this, if you're watching this and you know, this is striking a chord with you, um, to stay tuned because we're going to have some opportunities for you guys to go down there with us next year. I'm going to try to take a trip every quarter. I think the next one's going to be in March. And this particular trip, we're bringing four guys down with us. The next trip, we're going to try to bring 12 to 15 guys down with us. And instead of building two houses, we'll try to build like 10 to 12 houses. And I think the impact will be massive. You know, when it comes to giving, you know, giving has been a huge part of my life. It's a huge part of our company uh, culture, this idea of radical generosity, this idea of, you know, you can't outgive God or that the universe will never be indebted to you. And, and we know that a large portion of our success has been due to the fact that we give radically. And a lot of people have a, you know, a hang up in you know, where am I giving to? What is that money being used for? And what I see in Nicaragua is the opportunity to be able to give monetarily, not just with time and going down, which time, you know, is, is oftentimes worth, worth way more than money because it's so scarce and fleeting. But the ability to, after these trips, be able to give monetarily to these barrios in Nicaragua in order to build homes, it costs around 1650 bucks, something like that to build a house. And so I'm going to be looking at when I come back of putting together some type of program where people can give to that. You know, we've got some people down there in Nicaragua through chosen children ministry that are going to be building houses pretty much around the clock. And if you can imagine, let's just kind of paint this picture for you. Um, you know, we go down there in March next year, Let's say we bring, you know, 15 men down there and let's just say, you know, let's, let's say a set a, a crazy goal. Let's say all 15 of those people commit to giving 1650 bucks a month when they leave. That's a lot of money, but to know that that money is literally going to build a house every single month and what that does over the course of a year can't do the math that quick, but if you have 15 people building a house a month for 12 months, however many houses that is, imagine being able to go back to Nicaragua in three years and to be able to visit that very same barrio that we go to this week 
And there be three, 400 homes now in this barrio where before there was nothing but plastic tarps and dirt floors, you know, the tangible nature of that type of giving, you know, I've always looked at giving as the act of giving in and of itself is the obedience and, and is the, um, is where I find the, uh, reward and where that money goes, I wouldn't say it's inconsequential, but I'm not so much worried about it because it's the act of giving it's that act of obedience. But if it is that tangible, and if you know that money you're giving is going to giving a family, a home, like imagine not having a house and someone giving money to provide for you to be able to have a home. Like that's, it's life changing, but to be able to go back year after year, quarter after quarter, and see these houses being built and these infrastructures being laid in these communities and the impact that that will make, not only for that generation, but for generations to come, it's truly remarkable. And it's the first thing that really I've gotten my hands on to where I feel like I can make a real impact on the world. It's one thing to put out content like we do and to be able to, you know, really pour into people's lives like we do through social media. But it's a, it's, it's a whole different level of being able to see a group of people impacted through that type of radical generosity. And so I'm really excited about this first trip and really getting to test out these processes, test out, you know, this thesis that we've put together on how to reach the men of Nicaragua and to see it play out to see that come to fruition and then to come back next March with even more intensity, with even more purpose, with even more focus on helping in a tangible way. And so I hope you guys enjoy the footage that's going to come from this trip to Nicaragua. It's going to be incredibly impactful. We're still going to do some feedings at night. We're still going to do the revivals and preaching and making sure that the gospel is at the very, very center of everything that we do. Um, because that's always the center. Whenever they go into these barrios, the very first thing they do is build a church and the infrastructure starts with the church because that's the core and the foundation of which the entire community will ultimately be, you know, revived and be, you know, given hope for the future in a very, you know, quite frankly, hopeless situation. So I'm extremely excited. Um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a intense few days down there because we are still in this 75 hard challenge. So getting two workouts in a day while building houses in a third world country where it's still in the 90s, um, not in the 90s as in 1990s, but as in like 90 degrees outside uh, and having to get those two workouts in, having to stay true to the diet of no carbs and sugar when pretty much rice and beans is the staple <laughs> staple food that we eat when we're down there. So I've got a lot of food I'm going to have to bring uh, with me. Uh, but we're going to document that whole process and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to the camaraderie and just being able to really connect with the men that are going with us and being able to just love on these people that deserve it and that need it uh, more than ever. So with that, guys, I hope you enjoy this footage from Nicaragua and uh, we'll see you shortly.